Welcome, my friends, to another rip-roaring, horror-filled episode of Praise and Bibel. Mr. Praise. What we have found ourselves in, Mr. Beagle, is what is commonly known as a horror flick situation. To wit, our car has run out of gas and we're stranded in the middle of nowhere. No, Mr. Praise, in that. What do you mean, no? Why don't you use your brain for once, instead of walking round in a constant daze of bewilderment? What I was going to say, Mr. Praise is that we're not stranded in the middle of nowhere. Look, atop yon haunted looking hill, a spooky looking house. Wow, that is really spooky. I know it's spooky. It's my house. Your house, Mr. Beeble? Well, why didn't you tell me, sir? Well, let's enter. And you can make me a really nice cup of tea. My pleasure. Mr. Fraze and Mr. Beeble enter the house and begin another rip-roaring adventure. Nice place you have here, Mr. Beeble. It's a dump. Yes, I know it's a dump, but it's a nice dump. One should always be proud of one's dumps, even if they are wet and smelly. I am indeed proud of my dumps, as you like to call them. In fact, I have a scrapbook which contains my daily doings. Really? How frightful. No. <laughs> What's that, Mr. Praise? What's what? That jewel bandaged your hand. Oh, you mean the eternal light? That's a sacred jewel. It means a lot to me. It was given to me by my grandfather on his return from Egypt after one of his legendary trips. Oh, granddad, eh? Hmm. Why is it bandaged to your hand? It's bandaged to my wrist because, and this is a very big because, because it's mine. And if it gets stolen, I shall return from the grave looking for revenge. But you're not dead now, Mr. Praise. No, I'm not dead now, I grant you that. But I soon very might be. This sacred jewel has ancient powers, ancient powers of the ancient Egyptian gods, and possibly immortality. So, your grandfather was Egyptian? No, he was an Egyptologist. Did he walk like an Egyptian? Oh, very funny. Did he travel by camel? live in a pyramid with his mummy. He was very clever, actually, before he went mad. Clever, was he? Yes. I mean, he could write and read hieroglyphics. I mean, I could read hieroglyphics, but I can't write it. I know it started with H-Y-R. That's very interesting, that is. <laughs> Have you ever used it around anybody before? Not yet, Mr. Beagle. You're very dark, aren't you, Mr. Lots of people have dark secrets they want to keep hidden. Something they don't want to show. Like you, Mr. Beaver. How do you know about the man in my attic? I didn't. Until you just mentioned him now. Oh, sorry. Uh, forget I said anything. You, what man in your attic? You can't shy away from it now. Forget it. What I meant to say was... That... Oh, let's just change the subject. Let's not. Who 
would like a nice hot cup of tea? I don't want another bloody cup of tea! Do you understand? I am fed up with tea. But you like your tea. I don't like any more tea. Show me your attic this instant. Our devoted duo make their way to the attic. Hello. Hello. You who? You who? That's funny, Mr. Beaver. There's an echo. No, there wasn't. It was me. It was me. It was me. It was. I have the Marmite sandwiches. Him, the man in the attic I was telling you about. I know that, Mr. Beeble, but he was inhuman. Yes, that's him. Boris. Boris? Yes. Well, that's what I call him. It was either Boris or Karloff. Don't know whether that's his real name or not. No, this is going to sound nuts. But your ghoul man seemed familiar. What? Not like your... That's it! Your ghoul man is my grandfather! And you've got him locked in your damned attic! I'm sure you'll be all right up there, Mr. Praise! Don't worry about me, Mr. Beeble. I have the eternal light, remember? Remember me? I'm Adrian Heavenly Praise, your grandson. Would you like a cup of tea? Sleep. Ooh, I don't know. About an hour or so? An hour or so. My grandfather has escaped and is even now, probably as we speak, roaming the English countryside searching for brains and flesh to eat. Oh, I don't think so. He only eats Marmite sandwiches. And how much Marmite do you think is left in the village? House and horror. What are we to do? Get another pot, Mr. Beeble. We're going searching for Gramps. Right, come on. There's not a moment to lose. I know. We'll take the car. But Mr. Beeble, the car is D-E-A-D -E dead. Well, shouldn't we give it a proper burial and all that? Lay it to rest. What? A funeral service for a car? Don't be so ludicrous. I've had an idea. Why don't we pour tea into the petrol tank and try running the car on that? Mr. Beeble, without a shadow of a doubt, that has got to be the most ridiculously brilliant idea. And it just might work. Let's try it. Pass me the teapot. Pot of tea handed over, sir. Thank you, Mr. Beeble. I think it liked the extra sugar I gave this. Wait, Mr. Beeble! Oh dear, 
dear. There goes your no claims bonus. Come on, into the woods. He'll be searching for a party of ever so effete people, sipping champagne and nibbling caviar. The last time he escaped, he was found pulling the arms and legs off of squirrels and throwing sheep out of trees to see whether they advance. What was that? There it is again. Oh, let's get out of here before Boris turns up. Too late, Mr. People. He's standing behind you. Oh, my father in the brace. You naughty grandfather, put my friend down or I'll zap you with the eternal stone! Ah! Sorry, Mr. Beeble. Now that's it, grandfather. Now you're listening to me. Right, back in the attic with you. Fated Bibel, resolute to deal the Grandpa Ghoul with a double dose of fearless dare and do. There you are, you naughty toad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, back to another edition of Pimp My Great Grandmother. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you're back to your usual self. Now, where's Mr. Bibel? It's my blighty Gramps has got a lot, Mr. Beeble, in the attic. <laughs> Praise? Is that you? Oh, thank God. I thought you were dead. Why? Well, you were... you were... expunged. Wow! I took a direct hit from a ghoul growler! And I somehow managed to survive! You have to get me out of here! I can't stand the dark, and I'm claustrophobic! I'll be up in a second. I just have to pick up this wedding ring inexplicably left on the side in front of me. Never mind your flaming ring. Get me out of here. Never mind your ring. Just get me down. Oh. Oh. I'm dead. Dead. And I'm a ghost. 
the eternal light. No wonder. It's been stolen. For Peter Cushing's sake, Mr. Praise, what's keeping you? Mr. Beeble, I have discovered something that is wondrous. What? The eternal light. It works. It's been stolen. And true to legend, I have returned from the grave. So what are you going to do now, then? I suppose I'd better go looking for revenge. <laughs> hey, how does your grandmother feel about her latest body person? <laughs> I want something from you. <laughs> the eternal light. I had to borrow the ghoul's body in order to set you free. Whatever happened to your body? I don't know. It's somewhere it wasn't where I left it. Still, with me in control of the ghoul's mind and body, that'll spell the end for him anyway. <laughs> Would you like a Marmite sandwich? Oh, rather! 